July 1845. Dear Henry, you've told me yourself that it is difficult to begin anything without borrowing, and I know that you can use an axe, so I've left one for you in my front yard by the chopping stump. Do come by any time to fetch it. Perhaps we can discuss the new lecture I am working on while you are here. Your friend, Ralph Waldo Emerson. Every day or two I stroll to the village to hear some of the gossip which is incessantly going on there, circulating either from mouth to mouth or from newspaper to newspaper, and which, taken in homeopathic doses, was really as refreshing in its way as the rustle of leaves and the peeping of frogs. It's very good to make your acquaintance, Mr. Thoreau. Your sister seems to believe our thoughts and philosophies are very much aligned. It is good to find a youth so interested in the finer fruits of thought. goes your new experiment. Has genius struck yet at my woodlot? Yes, in fact, the experiment is going quite well. Excellent to hear. I do look forward to reading your new work. I hope you're keeping a good journal, full of your insights about life in the woods. Since you're here, I could use your assistance with some research I'm doing for a new lecture. Could you spare the time to help me? Certainly. Oh, thank you. I know you're quite busy with your own work, but I need help finding my copy of Homer's Iliad. I saw that you were reading it down by your new cabin. Do you still have it there? I haven't seen it, but I can look for it. Hmm. In the course of the summer, it appeared by the arrowheads, which I turned up in hoeing, that an extinct nation had anciently dwelt here. Before yet any woodchuck or squirrel had run across the road, or the sun had got above the shrub oaks, 
while all the dew was on, I began to level the ranks of haughty weeds in my bean field and throw dust upon their heads. Daily the beans saw me come to their rescue armed with a hoe and thin the ranks of their enemies, filling up the trenches with weedy dead. As I drew a still fresher soil about the rose with my hoe, I disturbed the ashes of unchronicled nations who in primeval years lived under these heavens, and their small implements of war and hunting were brought to the light of this modern day. Near at hand, upon the topmost spray of a birch, sings the brown thrasher, or red mavis as some love to call him, all the morning, glad of your society, that would find out another farmer's field if yours were not here. While you were planting the seed, he cries, drop it, drop it, cover it up, cover it up, pull it up, pull it up, pull it up. From under a rotten stump, my hoe turned up a sluggish, portentous, and outlandish spotted salamander, a trace of Egypt in the Nile, yet our contemporary. What is a course of history or philosophy or poetry, no matter how well selected, or the best society, or the most admirable routine of life, compared with the discipline of looking always at what is to be seen?